Heavenly Father, thank you for the hope that your love brings. God, thank you so much for this precious group of people. Would you lead, guide, and direct us? Help us to do what you've called us to do, to serve the people. Lord, we ask for your blessing during this Christmas season. Would you touch each heart with your love? We love you, God, and we ask these things in your precious son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, you may be seated. Thank you. Um, we have already done the items one through three on our agenda. Welcome to our new home. We're still getting a little bit situated here, so uh, thanks if there are tweaks or, or bugs that we need to work out. Thanks in advance for your patience. Um, we have tonight, we had two public hearings scheduled at the request of the petitioner. Um, they've asked us to remove public hearing uh, A. Was there anyone here that wanted to address this on, uh, on the public hearing A tonight? It's on our agenda. I wanted to give you a chance because it was published. I see no one coming forward. So we'll move on to a public hearing on our 2022 budget, Clerk Schultz. Oh, well, um, we don't need to declare that was held because we didn't have it, right, Dan? Right. There you go. Okay, so at 7.09. At 7.09, we'll start to conduct this public hearing. And the budget public hearing is scheduled for this evening to provide the public another opportunity to provide comment on the 2022 budget prior to this adoption. The board has received a resolution that was also published in our board book. Our board packet online is available for the public as well. It lays out all of the reports that are required as well as the um, revenues that are estimated for this year, the millage levy, and now is the opportunity for the public to give their comments regarding this. So is there anyone from the public that would like to give us comment on the proposed budget? Going once. Going twice. All right, we will close the public hearing on tonight's budget and we will give you an opportunity um, to, if you could all just take a moment, we're just getting some, uh, just bring your mics down here a little bit better. So there, we're, we're, like I said, we're learning and they're telling us in the booth that we need to have our mics pointed at us better. Um, thank you, continue to give us that feedback <laughs> if we need it. Um, all right, we'll move on to, um, so we'll close that public hearing and declare that it was held at 7.10 p.m. Uh, and we will move on to, um, we always like to have some good news at the front end of our meetings when we can, and this, um, it's been a tough time for all of us uh, with everything going on. So I just wanted to take a moment and just share a couple cool things that have been happening in the community. Um, as it relates to the response to the uh, tragedy in Oxford. So um, obviously we all are aware of the horrific event that happened, um, but I think what's really inspiring is to see the way the community has rallied uh, in response to that. So um, if you noticed our new sign out, or our new sign out front, we've had this, this has been the first message that was placed on that sign when it turned on uh, on November 30th and it was, it's still on there and it'll stay there probably for a while. Um, we also have those spotlights that are out there that turn on that shine four beams of light up to the sky. Um, we've been working really hard to do everything we can um, to, to support our friends and neighbors uh, to the north. Um, I've been um, in daily conversation with Supervisor Jack Curtis. Um, he absolutely feels the love. I had lunch with the Oakland County Supervisors today and um, they had a lot of nice things to say about um, the work that folks in Oregon have been doing. Um, on the screen is an image of all of the agencies that responded and assisted to the event on November 30th uh, in Oxford. Um, I do wanted to say a special thanks to our Fire Chief Rob Duke and our Lieutenant Darren O'Fira who have been absolutely involved in this uh, since the onset and, and uh, Darren continues to be working with the victim's family. So, um, but there have been some glimmers of hope and some light and I wanted to share that um, with you all right now. So I think you all know we have a citizen of the month and I hope when you walked in, you got to see on our new video board, it scrolls through um, our heroes. These are our, this is like our wall of fame, our brightest and best. And so this month um, we wanted, uh, this is a picture of Scott Taylor and Jack Curtis, supervisor of Oxford. They sent me this picture together. I think Jack sent that to me saying how great 
our Orion residents are. And this next picture, these next couple pictures, um, are at Sick Pizza Company. Uh, this is in uh, Oxford, but most of the people that, I know the owners are Orion residents, and a lot of the, their employees are Orion residents. We have Orion school board members. But what happened up there was remarkable. So I see the Sick Pizza crew here. Can you guys come down here to our new podium that just got installed hours ago? You'll be our first ones at the podium. So this was incredible because, um, so we have owners, Scott and Jen Taylor, and uh, Tom Bailey and crew. Um, can, why don't you guys all introduce yourself and, and so we can know who's all here, please, and your roles, and speak close to the mic, please. Tom Bailey. <laughs> You're just going to introduce. Allison, and this is Kyla. Hi. Hi, Kyla. Um, my name's Evie, and my dad is an owner. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom is your dad's boss? No, she's yeah. kind of the boss. Uh, Jen Taylor, Scott's wife. So, Evie, can I call on you? Yeah. What happened? So you guys decided, I know it wasn't your decision, but I know you worked a lot of hours. So tell us what you guys did and what happened in response to, you guys wanted to do something to help. Your dad and, and Mr. Bailey got together, and tell us what you guys did. So we basically decided, like, the only thing we could do to help was, is, and what we know is, like, to cook food. So <laughs> we talked, like, Wednesday night, the dads did, and I was there too. And <laughs> we were like, well, we can make pizza for people. And so we started out, and we had, like, a small goal. What was our goal? 25 grand. 25 grand. First of all, Abby, 25 grand is not a small goal, but okay. <laughs> but go on. Well, my prediction was 26. Okay, all right. And then, um, so we started on, well, yeah, we started on Thursday, and we started making small round pizzas, pepperoni and cheese for donations. And then after Wednesday, or after Thursday, we were running out of stuff. So then we, a lot of people helped and got us more food and boxes, and we made a lot of pizzas and got a lot of donations for people. So how many pizzas did you guys make in four days? So the, turn, the cash registers were turned off, and every person that you see in these I took a whole bunch of pictures, but these I just picked a couple. Every person donated their time, right? You didn't have any payroll, but you also didn't make any money. Uh, how many pizzas did you guys make in four days? 2,302 pizzas. I'm not good at math, so I'm going to use my calculator. I think I heard the total. Um, and what was the total, Evie, that you guys raised? 102,000 something. 102,130. 102. I, I wrote 102,160. So I'll donate 30 60. bucks to square it up if my, <laughs> if my certificate's wrong. Um, I was there. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. There were people dancing on the edge of the road, giving away free pizza. Just so you guys know, I'm sure you guys already did the math. This is a good business model. You guys were selling those small pizzas for $44.37. <laughs> yeah, you, guys, you guys will be the most profitable pizza joint in the world if you can sell those small pe pepperoni pizzas for 44 bucks going forward. I'm sure you'd love that. But we just wanted to take a couple minutes to say so many people stepped up, but you guys raised six figures and complete guerrilla volunteerism. Just let's roll up our sleeves and do this. So I'm gonna come down there real quick. That's amazing. In our brand new building, the first people that we get to present are citizen of the month for, um, so the Charter Township of Oregon gratefully expresses its appreciation to the Six Pizza team for their hard work and selfless dedication in their response to the Oxford tragedy and donating pizzas made with love, capital L-O, uh, raising $102,160 for those affected by the tragedy. We award you the Citizens of the Month Award presented this 20th day of December, 2021. So congratulations. Want to give it Brian, get in here. 
Is everybody in? Yeah, you guys hold up. Maybe. Hold on. I'm trying I know, to get right? on the other I can't side. Ask. I mean, Abby did a great job. I'll try, but I usually end up a babbling idiot. Um, <laughs> she can make right. it. Right. Um, I think that um, the, the one thing that, because Tom and I kind of, at the end of it all, we kind of regrouped and, and, you know, we're trying to figure out, you know, the takeaway from it. And obviously there's the money, but, like, um, the true value that we received from, all these people helping and, and donating was <clears throat> that can never be taken away, not by any punk in a school or um, not by anybody. And just the, the true support and love we got from all over the state, all over the world. Um, WCSX, like when you, when you see those boxes of cheese, like yeah, we, literally, we literally used our food that we would have for a whole week in the first day. So, you know, Tom just kept saying, you know, because I'm the day-to-day -day operations, and Tom's just like, do we have enough food? And I'm like, no, we don't have close to enough food. So I reached out to Big Jim at WCSX on the morning show, and he put it out there, and all of a sudden, it was literally like a, like a biblical parable. Like there was, um, I'd open the walk-in, and there'd be another stack of cheese or another, another pile of boxes, and I'm just like, man, we're going to make it through today. So that was Friday, and then Saturday came, and Big Jim literally called me, from WCSX and said, what do you need? And I was like, and I just started listing stuff. I'm like, I'm going to need 600 more pounds of cheese. And I mean, 2,300, and, you know, 2,300 pizzas is just like, you can't do that. You can't make that. Any pizzeria will tell you the, the old guy of Vendetti's that, that we bought it from said, there's no way you can do that many pizzas. You just can't do it. And, and, and we did, and, and it wasn't us. I mean, it was, it was truly, it was truly a miracle. And, um, I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but it really was, and I think that it was, I think that it was cheesy, yeah. Pun wasn't intended, but I'm glad it happened. So um, thank you very much for the recognition. My biggest recognition um, in my heart was for Abby. Um, she was literally there every minute that I was there, um, at least 60 hours. Uh, her mom tried to take her home a couple times, and she's like, no, I'm going to stay. I'm good. And it's not like she was a kid hanging out, playing with markers. She was literally back there doing everything, bossing everyone. So she's going to be a, she's going to be a great leader. Yeah, there she is back there yelling at somebody. So. I, had some good, I had some good pictures of her covered with, uh, with the flower. Yeah, so, I mean, you guys typify what our community is about, and we have gotten a lot of, of, of um, accolades just for our response looking out, and I think it's just how we're wired. And, Scott, you, you and I go way back from the miracle field, you know, and just people really stepped up. So, and, and literally... Jack Curtis was calling me saying, hey, we need cheese up here. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to like, I know lots of restaurants on but I went down to Sheldon's here on Baldwin. Oh, yeah. He gave me 60 pounds of cheese. This is the back of my truck. I'm delivering cheese up to the place. And he, no one would take money for anything. No, I'm donating. It's cool. The funniest picture, which I forgot to send, was um, you guys made pizza in how many different boxes that went out your door? 20 different boxes. Yeah. They, were, they were selling pizza in Little Caesars boxes and Hungry, hungry Howies. Hungry. And, yeah. I mean, like, all these pizza chains are just, give it, just, just donating stuff. So, again, a $100,000 impact um, for four days of hard work. And I agree. Um, you guys all get a ton of credit, but I saw Evie working her tail off. So, congratulations. And thank you guys for being here. Let's give them a round of applause. We thought, you want to say anything else? I thought for sure you guys were going to bring us pizza tonight, but... <laughs> no, we got the kids running the joint, so we got to go back and make sure it's the pizza. The pizza is the pizza is amazing. Thank you so much. Way, Good to see you guys. Right. Thank, you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Um, and then I do have we did have a presentation that somehow I didn't have added on there, but I want to get a brief update from our friends in Lansing at Midwest Strategy Group when we do approve the agenda. We will add that presentation that will have already happened to the agenda, but we'll add item 5B as a presentation from Midwest Strategy Group. Gentlemen, I do have your, your PowerPoint, but we like to, um, we have a team that supports us in our efforts in Lansing, and we like to have them kind of report to us what they're working on and uh, on our behalf. And so we thought it'd be good as we wrap the year up to kind of get an update and see how things are going for us in Lansing. <clears throat> So Dave and Mike, thank you for being here. Yeah, 
Yeah, appreciate it, Supervisor. So Dave Hodgkins, Mike Campagnoni from Midwest Strategy Group. We do uh, government relations on behalf of the township up in Lansing, like the Supervisor said. Um, and we just want to give a quick uh, wrap up for 2021 and then maybe talk about a few of the things that we're hearing are going to come up in 2022. So, where's the clicker? I, I got it. I'll, I'll click for it, yeah. So uh, we did have in the fall um, our actual state budget passed, $70 billion budget. Uh, I just picked out a few things that are relevant to local government up there. We did see um, a 2% increase to the base of CVT revenue sharing. Um, there was actually a pretty significant focus on placemaking grants, um, community revitalization type funding, and then also um, there was some infrastructure funding in there as well that the governor had prioritized for some of the state's most uh, critical um, and serious condition bridges and roads and things like that. Um, there was a little bit of hesitation to use too much federal dollars uh, in this funding because we didn't have a lot of guidance at the time from the feds and we knew that additional funding would be coming, uh, which we can also talk about in a few minutes. So, I'll go ahead and thank you. So um, after a marathon session, uh, the legislature did pass a couple budget supplementals um, the biggest one that probably got the most headlines was the economic development package, $1.5 billion that created the Strategic Outreach and Attraction Reserve Fund. Uh, this fund is specifically designed, or I should say intended to um, attract and retain large scale development projects. So um, GM has certainly been one of discussion and this kind of came about um, Several members, several senators, representatives had wanted to do something like this for a while, but I think the thing that really lit a fire uh, was when Ford um, decided to expand outside of the state of Michigan, and we certainly did not want to see that happen again. So uh, this bill package is designed to help with gap financing for anything from um, qualified job retention and training all the way to site acquisition and development. Um, Another supplemental that passed was a billion dollars. It's the year-end supplemental to kind of just wrap a few things up. In that, we saw additional increased funding for um, COVID prevention and treatment, uh, antibody testing. Um, there was a lot of things in there for school safety metrics. Um, and then we also saw things in there like substance abuse prevention programs as well as um, housing, fi financing for uh, low-income housing. Um, couple just policy bills that I wanted to bring up and mention. Um, we've talked to you guys a couple times about aggregates and short-term rentals. Uh, these bills are still floating out there. Um, Supervisor Barnett, I know you were um, engaged uh, a little bit uh, in the last couple months, particularly on short-term rentals. There was a real push. Another marathon session night that went until 2 a.m. Um, where the House uh, was really twisting arms to try and get votes to pass this bill through. What that one would specifically do, specifically do is preempt a local government from really having any say whatsoever on regulating short-term rentals. Um, it creates a by-right use. It deems them all as residential property, and so you would not be able to do anything that you wouldn't already be doing for a private residence. Um, so it's very dangerous. It's a slippery slope for local governments to be preempting things like this. Uh, so we're watching out. We fully expect that that's going to come back um, in the new year, uh, and they're going to make a push for that. Um, the PPT expansion bill, House Bill 5351, that was actually signed today as a part of that larger economic development package. The reason I wanted to include that was because it expands the industrial and commercial uh, PPT expansion on um, property from 80000 from what it was, up to $180,000 now. Um, and that was going to really blow a hole in some of the local government budget. Now, the legislature did allocate $75 million for reimbursements, uh, but that is one-time funding. And so we fully expect that there's going to be a conversation going forward between um, local government groups and the legislature on creating a more permanent mechanism to fund that going forward. Sure, and I, I just wanted to touch on a couple items you're going to see as we go into 2022. Michigan is a, a multi-year legislative session state. That means any bill that's currently introduced will carry over and can be considered next year as well. So the legislature is on its two-year cycle, uh, almost like the U.S. Congress is, and bills can be considered at any time. So one thing I think we're going to see um, as we really go into the new year is the incredible amount of, of, of money that the state has on hand be expended. 
Um, the federal government uh, has provided a lot of different funding sources to the state. Um, the new bipartisan infrastructure package that recently passed, the previous uh, CARES Act and ARPA, uh, American Rescue Plan dollars are, are still out there in some places. And we're gonna see probably something on the order of about a half dozen budget supplementals over the course of the next six months or so to allocate something on the order of 10 to $15 billion. Uh, we're in a pretty unusual budget place right now. I've never seen a dollar amount like this out there. Uh, expect to see supplementals on water infrastructure. That one's probably the most complete. The Senate's already acted on that. Uh, about $3 billion for, for water infrastructure, lead service line replacement, PFAS remediation. You'll also probably see things on parks and recreation. Um, they've talked about a budget supplemental for that. That's something we're gonna be talking to the township a fair amount about um, because there's some interest there. Uh, broadband, um, EV infrastructure, a lot of different areas that, that you're gonna see spending on coming from the state. Um, you know, the other thing I'll mention coming out of the Oxford tragedy, it certainly created a, a, a renewed focus on firearms policy here, here in the state, um, something you're seeing a little bit more of and, and that be discussed a little bit more in Lansing. So um, I think that pretty much covers it, but if anyone has questions, we're happy to, to answer them or talk offline about it. Thank you. All right, um, we talk daily. <laughs> sometimes multiple times a day. Um, they do a great job of protecting our interests and supporting us. Are there any questions from the board? For Dave or Mike? Just one. Oh. Go ahead, Donnie. I was gonna be, hopefully they're leaving for Christmas. That, that's <laughs> correct, yes. The legislature went on break uh, after last Tuesday's uh, session. They wrapped up about a, <laughs> a week ago, Tuesday, and they'll be back the 12th, although you won't see a lot of legislative policy activity probably until after the governor's state of the state, which will be a little bit later in January. Thank you. They're out for almost a month. Any changes with election laws? Not a lot recently. Um, there has been some high-level meetings between the Secretary of State and the legislature that have occurred in the last several weeks, but we have not seen a ton of new policy come out of that yet. Thank you. I just want one other quick one is that um, the veterans to reimburse the uh, locals for exemptions. Yeah, so there were a couple of bills that um, have fizzled out a little bit uh, this session. Senator Bumstead j did just introduce a couple of bills, however, that um, were kind of work grouped over the past couple of months. Um, MTA, MML had been closely involved on that. We expect um, a hearing coming up uh, probably sometime mid-January, end of January when they return on that. Um, and this is one that uh, MML, MTA, MAC have fully supported um, because it does identify um, a, a funding mechanism, if you will, for that reimbursement, which is something that the other bills have really lacked. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Um, thank you, gentlemen. Um, we'll move on tonight to approval of our bills. I'll see if I was trained properly on this system here. One second. <coughs> yes, Ms. Steele. I can make the motion to pay the bills in the total amount of $1,457,989. $1, I said that wrong. One four five seven nine eight nine and 48 cents. Four. And then just a couple comments, Chris, if that's okay. Go ahead. Um, we are still wrapping things up at the building, so um, we had some furniture and blinds and um, mats and drawers um, at a cost of 129000 We had our sewer and water bill, uh, which was close to 650000 um, We did have asphalt specialist and OHM working um, jointly on our pickleball tennis court uh, um, engineering and the trailhead uh, over at uh, Orion Center. Um, we, uh, something kind of exciting is uh, ener energy charging stations. Um, and I know that we've made a deposit for, and I don't know how many that is, so I would like to know how many that's going to be. And then I did see that Meyer was going to add them as well too, because Giffels Webster looked at their plan and that was added onto their plan, their site plan. Um, where the old Kmart station is. So those are just some highlights of the bills. Okay, there are six EV charging stations for a total, of, they're all dupe, double plug, nine. Okay, nine, okay. I see what I'm, I gotta drag it to the other screen. Okay, so now I gotta find my mouse. Okay, 
It'll be helpful when I have that other screen here. Growing pains. Um, nine EV charging stations, right, Sam? Yeah, it's um, this payment is for nine at the parks. We will have six at Township Hall, but that is already in process. And each charging station can have two vehicles charging at a time. We're jumping in to EV charging, and a lot of our residents have been asking us for that. All right, are there any other comments or questions on the bills? Did you have another question in there, or was it just the EV? The, no, just the number. How many, okay. And then the, and Meyer is putting them as, in as well. Yes. Okay, um, let's, let's suppose moved by Steele, I think it was supported by Bernie, or was that Flood? Flood. Flood, I'm sorry. Uh, roll call, please, Clerk Schultz. Schultz, yes. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Del Rimpel? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Okay, this is the first opportunity for public comment. Uh, we give you an opportunity to address the board. Um, if you look at the back of the agenda, it kind of tells you about the decorum. Uh, but if anyone wants to address the board, this is your first opportunity. We ask that these be non-agenda items. Seeing no one come forward, we'll give you a chance later if you change your mind. We'll move on to approval of tonight's agenda. We have a few changes. Yes, Ms. Schultz. Okay, so I have quite a few here. So we're going to add the Midwest presentation. That's 5B. We'll also um, note that there was an updated memo for uh, 9G committee appointments. We will add under 9M consent, one-time employee COVID stipend. And under pending, we will include a new item, release of PACE assessment, powers distributing P&M leasing. Okay. So we've made, we're gonna propose to make those, is that a, are there any other changes or amendments? The only thing is that um, a number H, the, the treasurer, um, oh yeah, we on, on um, consent nine H. We want to remove appoint deputy treasurer. Well, that will happen at a future meeting. Um, yep, thank you. Uh, th those are my only. I think you covered it. Are there any other? Oh, we also need to remove the ten um, C, which is the uh, public hearing that was canceled tonight. Um, so we'll remove that item ten C. Any other changes or a motion to approve as amended? Mr. Supervisor? Yes. I would move to approve the agenda as amended. Support. Any other comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, 7 0. Next item is our consent agenda. Tonight consists of the following items. I will read them. This will be problematic, Dave, if I have to look backwards that side screen, so. Turn that for you? Uh, no, because I, I, oh yeah, actually, oh, actually, I'll have one of those, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you can keep it like that for a minute. Well, actually, I can see what page it's on. Um, consent agenda consists of the following items. Let's put it up like this. We'll be approving our minutes from our last meeting approving our Oakland County Sheriff's Office Law Enforcement Services Agreement, approving some job description updates, approving the 2022 non-union salary rates, adopting a resolution for Ordinance 41 schedule fees and escrow changes, charges, I'm sorry, uh, approving, uh, setting, I'm sorry, a point joint public hearing date for a Ridgewood PUD, approving the 2022 committee appointments, appointing a deputy supervisor, um, uh, receiving and filing the, the Oakland, I'm sorry, the Orion Chable, Cable Commission <laughs> uh, budget and financial audit, um, approving the 2022 trade contracts, approving the temporary construction and grading easement agreement, and approving the Teamsters 214 letter of agreement for the accounting controller, and then also, last but not least, the one-time COVID stipend. Uh, one-time employee COVID stipend. Is there a motion to approve all that stuff? Mr. Supervisor, yes. I move to approve the consent agenda as amended. Support. Okay. Moved by flood, supported by Bernie. Is there any comments, questions on any of these items? A couple just quick ones from me. Um, thanks, Lieutenant Ophira, for his assistance on getting us this law enforcement services agreement. And we are um, tweaking and updating um, job descriptions uh, as the duties have changed for some of our directors, 
uh, over the years, and we're trying to update that. Um, thank you to all of our board members and our amazing volunteers who are willing to serve on our committees. If you're watching and you're not on one of our committees and you want to sign up, you can go to our website, and there's a form you can fill out there to let us know your interests. We're always looking for, for new people. Um, I want to say thank you very much to Jeff Stout, um, our Director of Public Services, um, who has been our Deputy Supervisor uh, for many years and has been awesome and um, is the most organized one in the building. <laughs> he, he's brought organization to me, making a slight change and changing that um, position to Sam Timko, who's um, our Chief of Staff, um, just to the close nature of the work we do on a lot of the grants and things that she, she writes and being able to have her sign those things in my absence will be helpful. Um, I think that's about it. I, I just want to say that um, it's been a really crazy year, and we appreciate um, all of our employees, our non-union employees, the members of our Teamsters Union, our firefighters, um, for their patience. Uh, we're doing the best we can in these trying times, and it's been uh, challenging. So those are kind of my comments. Are there any other comments or questions on any of these items? Um, Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? I'm sorry, is there any public comment on any of these items? Now, Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Del Rimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Steele? Yes. Ernie? Yes. Okay, next item on tonight's um, pending business is our year end budget adjustments. How do we like having all these directors sitting up here? So nice. Um, and uh, we have a couple that are in the audience, but uh, we'll, we'll get the right name plates here. Um, we do have a few year-end budget adjustments. I will, um, Ashley, since you're up here, do you want to take this? Do you want me to kick it off and then throw it over to you? Um, yeah, <clears throat> I can go ahead and take it if you want. Do you guys Please. want me to present here, or would you prefer me at the podium? No, oh, perfect. you're there is good, yes. Perfect. So if you can shoot it over to my screen, Chris, I actually have it up on my screen. Oh, perfect. <clears throat> or you can leave it there, too. Whatever you prefer. How's that? Perfect. Um, so just year-end budget cleanup stuff. A couple of these I actually don't necessarily think we'll need as I've been crunching numbers this last week, but in order to get them um, published in time for the board book, I did include them. Obviously, as you guys know, we definitely don't want to go over budget, so I'd rather be safe than sorry on some of these. Um, the first one is for the clerk's department. As we know, they've had tons of changes in staffing this year. Um, additional training, overtime. So we are requesting a budget adjustment for their department. The attorney department, um, we just received the last two attorney bills for October and November, but again, at the time I drafted the memo, we had not received October and November yet, so I did not know where we were trending. Um, I don't necessarily think that this one is needed either based on um, where we finished with October and November's invoicing. However, it's probably still a good idea to have it in there just as a, um, a safety. ARPA, what we ended up finding out with the ARPA money is that anytime we spend any ARPA money for water and sewer, we do need to track that independently because water and sewer is an enterprise fund. So really, this specific amendment is just asking that we physically move the money from our what we would call our internal COVID fund, where we deposited that $4 million um, over into water and sewer based on the board approved projects from earlier this year. So it's just a cleanup entry. And then the same with the special assessment district for Long Lake. Um, this year, they actually ended up spending more than what they brought in. However, they do have a fund balance of $641, so it's just a cleanup entry. Okay, so we do these every year, um, and we need to do this to keep our books straight, if that's the right term. Um, are there any questions or a motion to approve the recommended um, budget adjustments as presented? I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead, yep. I move to direct the accounting controller or budget procurement director, director pardon me, to make the budget adjustments based on the over budget funds and accounts listed. Or okay. Um, is there discussion or questions? I think you did a great job um, outlining that for us. Any public comment? on the budget adjustments. Clerk Schultz, how about a roll call? Barnett? Yes. Schultz, yes. Steele? Yes. Ernie? Yes. Del Rimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. That motion passes 7-0, and we will let you continue going if you're, if you're comfortable with that. Um, Ashley, on the 
Next item, general fund liability payoff. Okay, so um, at the budget workshop, the last one we had, I informed you guys that I would be looking into paying off one of the liabilities that we have on our balance sheet. How many of you guys were on the board back in 2011? Just Penny and Dan? Dan no, not, no, just one. I mean, Dan was our attorney, but Penny was the only okay. one out. So back in 2011, um, the general fund borrowed money from, I sh I'm sorry, they did not borrow money. The water and sewer department gave the general fund 400 and, let me see, $418,404 as a prepayment for rent for their DPW garage. So historically, each year they were paying $21,800 for rent to have that physical building on our land. Um, each year, we've been making an accounting entry to deduct from that money that was given. And it's just creating um, a lot of unnecessary entries on the back end, considering the general fund is in a healthy state and we have that money that we could give back to water and sewer. If the board agrees and we do give that money back to water and sewer, they will continue to make their rent payment annually as they have historically. It's just we will not be deducting, obviously, from that, that lump sum that they had given. Does that summarize it pretty well, Dan? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Just want to make a motion. Go ahead. Um, I move to approve the resolution authorizing the township supervisor, township clerk, and the director of budget and procurement in consultation with the township attorney and auditors to take any and all necessary steps to resolve the general fund liability owed to the water and sewer fund in the amount of $264,986.96. And to accomplish the same in 2021 fiscal year. Support. Okay. Was moved and supported. Are there any comments or questions? Mr. Supervisor? Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. I remember this very well. That believe at that time uh, that money was pulled forward for the Orient Center. Correct. Now we're paying that back, so that's off the books now. Great. Yes, yes. Awesome. We won't see it as a liability anymore in water and sewer. We'll not see it as a prepayment. It will just default back to their um, $21,800 annual rent. Awesome. Thank you. Ms. Steele, go ahead. Was there intra I, I, the one page I didn't understand, um, 654 at 1.5%, 418,000, do you even, that was page 262. Yeah, so what water and sewer did is they they gave us the 400 and I'm going to round the $420,000 um, up front, and that was the present day value of the 654,000. Okay, uh, a Penny, go ahead, yes, Penny. Um, just briefly, I want to thank Tandem Graves, our new accounting controller. I think sometimes when you get fresh eyes on things, it really brings a new perspective of how we can handle some of our accounting issues. And this is one of those things that I was happy to have her do and work in partnership with our um, budget and procurement director. It's a great partnership. Do you have your hand up? Oh, okay. All right, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing no one come forward, um, Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Schultz, yes. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dalrymple? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Okay. Brings us to next item on tonight's agenda, which is item C, um, which was removed, uh, which is item D, adopting the 2022 budget. We did have a public hearing uh, before this. We've had um, several budget work sessions. And now we are going to get a brief overview of where we are in the process before we, um, kind of a brief overview of the budget before we go ahead and adopt the budget. So that, I'm gonna flip it back to Ashley. All right, so I don't think the board's gonna see any surprises tonight. This presentation is pretty comparable to the one that you've seen the last two budget workshops with just some updated figures. So tonight I'm just gonna briefly go over the funds breakdown. So where we're anticipating we're going to finish this year and what we're looking to adopt next year, where the general fund is at, any personnel changes, the debt repayment schedule. And then if you have any questions for the directors, I don't have any slides for the directors. So it's just board comment if you guys do have any questions for them. So the fund breakdown, I did print this out for you guys in case it's too small to see on the screen. Um, but what I'm showing here, the 2020 fund balance is where we finished 2020. So that is a hard static number. 
2021 projected is where the directors are saying we're going to finish in each of those funds. So those are essentially just the best estimates of, you know, if we end up with the invoices on time that we can expense them this year, it's their best estimate. The next slide is actually going to show you where our project, where we typically see our projections at versus where we finish. So you will be able to see that even these, I believe, are extremely conservative. So I have no doubts that we're going to finish a lot better than what these projections are showing. The 2022 department requested is what we're looking to adopt. Now, I know it, it probably looks super alarming that these numbers are in red. Um, however, to me, I think it's a good thing. I think it's showing that we're being conservative. We're trying to spend down that fund balance. We don't want to continue to put money in our fund balance or our savings account and not have these projects lined up. So a lot of these funds, if you look through the detailed budget, it's because the departments are making um, purchases that have been planned. So for instance, the fire department is planning on buying two new apparatuses that were um, actually put on order this past year, which was board approved. So that's for them. Parks, they're following their millage. They're going to be doing the projects that they stated to our residents that they'll be doing. So if you move over to the um, estimated year end 2022 fund balance, that's going to take the difference between the 2020 fund balance, adding in the 2021 projected, and then adding in the 2022 department requested. So that's where our best estimate is that we're going to be finishing at year end next year. So we're still in really great shape. Um, I know at the first budget workshop, we talked about adopting potentially a fund balance guideline. Um, and so I did project that on the side as well. So the percentage of expenses are based on the 2021 actual activity. So where we finished 2020 at, um, and then based, um, the guideline is what um, I had showed to the board at that first budget workshop. So we're right in line, we're in great shape. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that even though we are projecting or requesting to adopt a negative budget in a lot of these funds, it's not necessarily a bad thing by any means. The general fund's historic performance, again, this is, this is in relation to that last slide. So you can see in all of the years that we adopted the budget where we've actually finished, we've always finished significantly better than we could have ever anticipated. The years that you see those dashes, those are zeros. So we adopted a balanced budget. All of the revenues that we collected, we said we were going to spend. Again, obviously in that difference column, you can see that that wasn't necessarily the case. In 2021, we adopted the budget saying that we were going to finish this year at $973, and we're actually projecting to put $623,000 into our fund balance. So again, the directors are extremely conservative. We've been doing great things. Um, no concerns from my standpoint with us adopting that negative $420,000 um, budget because I know we're going to perform better than, than expected. But then just the delta between the two years, the 2021 projected and the 2022, we would be estimating to put around 200,000 in the fund balance, assuming both of those, those projections um, were realistic. And just if we can hold for one second here, well, another way to look at this is we had projects that we had, so we were gonna put $1,000 in the bank in real rough terms when we adopted the budget 12 months ago. And what we're reality, in reality doing are putting more than half a million dollars in the bank, more than $600,000 in the bank. So it's a huge swing. And that's and one of the reasons for that is some of the projects we thought we would get done this year, we didn't get done, and they're getting pushed to next year, which is going to make that number more red next year. And that's why we're kind of looking at this as a two-year, um, I know Ashley said the same thing, but I'm seeing it maybe in a little different terms, kind of a two-year um, cycle where we're still going to be net um, more than $200,000 in the black uh, in t uh, to fund balance after the uh, the combining those two years. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Did anyone else have any other questions? I don't know if you want to take comments now. Yeah, if, if there are questions, we can take them. Or no. I just, I just want clarifications. If people see red, they think we're in the, you know, we're in the red, but this is like accounting. The way this accounting works, we're always a year or so behind because of where the projects were funded. So. Yeah, and that's what we've run into. That's like the tough, the tough part. Hopefully, Donnie, I'm not calling you out, but Donnie this morning is like, oh my gosh, there's so much red, it's like a Christmas tree. 
And I mean, it really is, and it looks scary. If we saw these red numbers in our own checking accounts, obviously, we would be pretty scared. But I mean, it's no different than a resident saving for a vehicle, and now you actually purchase the vehicle. You know, you're taking it out of your savings account. It's a good thing. So we're in great financial shape. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So a couple big things that we're looking to do next year, again, this is just a recap from the last workshop. We're separating the planning commission from planning and zoning. Historically, the planning commission has always charged all of their expenses to planning and zoning, so it's never allowed us to see a true picture of what they've actually um, expensed. Facilities and grounds, broke, breaking that out, the township hall as the department. If you asked us how much does it cost to run township hall, it would take a ton of time for us to crunch those numbers. So we broke that out so we could see what this facility as a whole is going to cost us. Ordinance enforcement historically has always belonged to the building department, but because the building department is a revenue-based department and ordinance enforcement writes the enforcements for the general fund, we're bringing them back over into the general fund. And then the street department is going to allow us to track all of our stoplights that we have to pay for, but then it's also going to allow us to get a true picture of what the Baldwin Road and Brown Road corridor are actually costing us as far as maintenance and upkeep and all of that. Over time in PTO vacation, you'll see that that's broken out. And then a lot of the items that were in the 101-248 account for general activities, we're breaking that into the individual departments. So for instance, the master plan has always been associated to this quote unquote general activities. Well, we all know that Tammy's department in planning and zoning actually implements that master plan. And so by breaking those into the individual departments, it's going to have allowed the directors to have more ownership over those projects and have oversight over those expenses instead of stuff being misapplied to those accounts. So it's just gonna create a ton more transparency going forward. Any questions at all about that? Proposed personnel changes, literally zero changes from the budget workshop. So these are the staffing changes that the directors are stating that they need. The contracted cleaning service has begun, so we did start that last week. Um, but the rest of these personnel we will be looking to hire in 2022. The debt repayments. So I know this is a big, a big Mike Flood um, point. And so I just wanted to make it a point to put this up here. Um, the top section is going to show you the two big debts that the township has, the Corridor Improvement Authority, and then, of course, this municipal complex and sheriff substation. So in 2022, those two debts are going to cost us roughly $1.5 um, and below that are all of the revenue streams that we are diverting to help us cover those two debt sources. So next year, the CIA revenue, the cash on hand from Brown Road, and all of the rent sources are hard static costs. We know for 100% fact that we are collecting those funds. The marijuana revenue and the host fee are conservative guesses um, or estimates. This year in marijuana revenue, you can actually see in that historical revenue chart down below. Year to date, we've received almost $290,000 worth of marijuana revenue. And year to date, as of this morning, we've received $561,000 in the host fee. So I believe those are extremely conservative going forward. I think those numbers will be larger. But again, being conservative, um, we rounded down a little bit. So that's going to leave us with a quote-unquote fund balance of roughly 400000 next year that we can bank for future years if we ever see a downturn um, in taxes or if maybe marijuana revenue decreases, the host fee decreases, it's going to allow us to store up a fund balance. Or if everything ends up great the next couple of years, then we can actually start to pay off some of those debts a little bit faster than expected. Before we go forward, this is important. <laughs> We're in a very good financial position to, to pay this debt. And this board could decide in one year from now to say, okay, let's take that additional 400,000 and put it to the um, principal. Um, so, so we will have options, but this picture is a lot better and it's more clear, meaning that the numbers are a lot more accurate than they were even a year ago when we were proposing to build this new building that we're in. So 
um, that's a positive thing. They've they've gone in, in that in the positive direction, not the opposite. So um, I I do feel like we're we're pretty conservatively figuring these numbers and um, feel in a really a comfortable position that we're gonna um, be able to pay pay the debt um, both debts off probably earlier than scheduled. And then the last point that I wanted to bring up in relation to the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. In August, we received a letter that said that they were anticipating that our contract was actually going to go up 5.3%. And so they asked us to budget that going forward. We did receive a letter a few weeks ago, which was in consent. Um, and they're actually only raising our contract rate by 2.7%. So that was great news. Um, it's going to allow Lieutenant Ofiera to hire more people if, if he and the board chooses to do so. So it's going to allow our police fund to finish in a lot better position than what was presented at the previous board workshop. So other than that, that's all I have. If you have any questions for me or any of the other directors, feel free to ask. Yes, thank you, Ashley. All the directors are here tonight. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I know you've had a few chances at budget workshops to interact with them on their individual budgets, but we're happy to take any questions on any budget right now, and we have all the backup we can pull up if we need it. So did you have your hand up, Donna? I did. I just want to say thanks, Ashley. You have done an excellent job from where we were three years ago and um, streamlining it and getting it to a professional uh, level that is very um, easy to understand and having everybody participate at the level from each department to make sure that they uh, follow their budget um, very tightly and know what they're putting in and so um, moving forward as the township I think we um, are on the right track so thank you and all the department has for taking the time to do um, the tedious part of one bolt at a time of putting that in the budget so Thank you. Yeah, I think we have, we have such a great team here. In all honesty, everybody's so great to work with. Uh, go ahead, Penny. I'd like to make a motion um, to on December 20th, 2021, to approve the resolution of the Charter Township of Orion, adopting the budget and setting the millage levy, a resolution to establish and define the adoptions of budgets, levy millage and make appropriations for fiscal year 2022, thereby adopting the 2022 budget as presented. We have a extensive resolution that was also provided to the board members. It's also online for the public to take a look at, but that includes all of the other budgets as well as budget monitoring, authorization to pay warrants, the treasurer's reports, the periodic fiscal reports, the chief administration officer is the supervisor, and the chief financial officer is the clerk. The public hearings on this budget have to be held, and we've done that in compliance with the requirements. Everything has been published as it was required. So this is online for our public to look at. We do have copies in the clerk's office if you'd like that. And in agreement with Donnie, you have done a phenomenal job and I appreciate all of our directors. This is a great budget and it's always easy to follow what you're asking us to do and I very much appreciate that. So that's my motion, just this short one. Support. Okay. I will start by echoing um, what Donnie and Penny said and, and um, extending the thanks to all the directors that are here tonight. This has been the most difficult year of my career. <laughs> um, and it seems like these years should be getting easier and they don't seem to be, but there's a lot of reasons this year was challenging, but um, I want to send a thank you and an apology <laughs> at the same time to, to our amazing directors who have um, even just this afternoon um, dealt with the craziness of, of what's going on and sometimes not the best version of me. So thank you and I'm sorry and I um, appreciate you all. And, and I am really proud of sometimes hard to grasp exactly all these numbers and what we're doing. But um, the coolest thing is if you'd look at that slide that shows our recent history, our track record over the last few years, like we consistently year over year over year perform better than what we and what we said we were going to do. Um, and uh, even to, we had some some discussions where I'm like, stop being as conservative because I know we're going to finish so much better. And I know that's not the right approach, but when we were crunching numbers at the last minute, I was um, stressed out. But um, I, I do just want to give a heartfelt thanks to the whole team and all the supporting staff that's not here um, that just lets us do what we're doing. The fact that we're sitting in this 
incredible boardroom. Um, we finished this project this year in spite of every, all the odds against us and we're on budget um, with the project and, and we're, we have a great plan to pay it all back and even better than we anticipated. It's like um, a lot of hard work thanks to the board and everybody else. So thanks for the opportunity to say those things. Thank you to all my directors. I'm looking at you all personally. Um, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for what the year has, and, I, and I'm, I'm excited for, uh, for the position we're in. So anyone else want to have any comments or questions from the board? Mr. Mike, yep. Uh, I want to echo all the good goals. I, I feel sorry for your voice tonight, Ashley. But uh, as, as a, I'll speak for all the trustees. I think I can say that for all of us. Uh, this is our statutory responsibility as an elected trustee is the budget make sure we're in financial constraints and everything. And I want to thank all the directors, too, and all our staff. And I have to agree with Chris and Penny and Donnie. Since the day I sat in this seat, these are the numbers I've been wanting to see and, and, and really appreciate it. Now we know where we're at in this township. So, Not criticizing how things were done in the past, but this is what's something that we've been, numerous boards have been looking for. So. Appreciate that. That's it. Thank you. All right. We will go. Uh, is there any other comments from the board? There was support on that. That was supported by Flood. Thank you. Any public comment on the budget? Any directors want to say anything? Because you guys got a pass and I know when I had to. <laughs> <laughs> we all got paid. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Ernie. Yes. Joe Rimple. Yes. Flood. Yes. Urbanowski. Yes. Barnett. Yes. Schultz, yes. Steele. Yes. Okay. Um, the budget is adopted and passed. The, everybody take a deep breath. Um, next item tonight is Township in Initiated Text Amendment. Let's see if I can switch it back over here. See if this works. Yeah, there it is. Technology is working. Um, so, Clerk Schultz, can I throw this to you? Sure. Um, so we thought we would get this done a little bit sooner, but because we changed buildings, we had a publishing requirement that we couldn't meet. So we felt that it was important to make sure that everything was published properly because this is really a big ordinance change and we want to make sure that the public has everything that they need. On the second reading, PC 2021-73, Township Initiated Text Amendment to Zoning Ordinance Number 78, Industrial Park IP, Article 18, Section 18.01, Land and uses. Um, you had documentation at that num November 1st, 2021 board meeting. And that first reading was held on that night. It was advertised in the December 1st, 2021 edition of the Lake Orion Review for the second reading and possible adoption tonight. You have letters that were presented from Tammy Gerling, our planning and zoning director. All of the requirements were met and we followed those. Therefore, I move to declare that the second reading of PC 2021-73, text amendment to zoning ordinance number 78, article 18, section 18.01, to have been held tonight, December 20th, 2021, and to approve and adopt as presented. Support. Okay, it's moved by Schultz and supported by Urbanowski. <coughs> Comments or questions? Great summary, Tammy, in the, in the packet. Thanks for your work on this, Ms. Gerling. I see no comments from the board public comment. I see no one wants to talk at our new podium. <laughs> like three hours old, three hours <laughs> new. All right, we'll bring it up here to vote. Um, call the roll, please, Clerk Schultz. Dalrymple. Yes. Flood. Yes. Urbanowski. Yes. Arnett. Yes. Schultz, yes. Dio. Yes. Ernie. Yes. Okay. Um, Next item is a resolution on an opioid settlement. Um, we, right page here, 309. Okay, so the request is for my office to approve the resolution to participate in the national opioid settlement with Johnson & Johnson and three other pharmaceutical providers. Um, the state of Michigan signed on as a participant in the national opioid settlement um, the settlement identifies the Charter Township of Orion as an eligible participant for direct payment of settlement proceeds. Assuming 100% participation of the local government unit, unit participants, the Michigan Attorney General's conservative estimate of Orion Township's projected settlement amount would be $86,549 over 18 years. 
The settlement provides expansive options with broad discretion to the township how the funds may be used to address opioid related treatment and prevention services. So I'm asking for the board to approve the resolution so that we can opt in to the settlement and we won't be discussing on how we will spend the funds until we get them, but certainly um, youth assistance, uh, North Logan Community Coalition come to mind as great opportunities to educate as well as um, purchasing Narcan potentially as well um, for our first responders. Uh, so um, that's kind of my, uh, we won't be using this to build parks, but we can use it to, to fight the issue that it's sort of created. Um, is there a motion to approve the resolution? Yes. I move to approve the resolution to participate in the opioid settlement that will allow the Charter Township of Orion to register as a settlement participant and authorize the township clerk to certify and file the same. Or I do have a question. Go ahead with your question. So also for rehabilitative purposes, correct? I know that we're looking at the Narcan, but that those funds would go to NOCC most likely for rehabilitation or education. Oh, those are qualifying expenditures from my understanding, yes. And I think that's what we would consider. And it will come back before the board once yes. we get those funds so we can talk about it as board, how we want to see those funds spent. Correct. And Sam, when would we, when would we anticipate potentially seeing the first payment? I believe April. Okay. And some could go to the police as well. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Um, did we already call the roll on that one? Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there any other board comments or questions? Thanks, Sam, for following through on that. Mm -hmm. Good teamwork on this one. Any public comment? Roll call, please, Clerk Schultz. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz, yes. Steele? Yes. Ernie? Yes. Del Rimpo? Yes. Who supported? Uh, Steele. Thank you, Chris. No problem. Okay, last item on tonight's pending business um, is a release of a PACE assessment for powers distributing P&M leasing. So the request tonight before us is to approve the release and discharge of a lien against two parcels created under the special assessment agreement in January, uh, actually, actually in January of 2016, sorry. Uh, pursuant to the special assessment agreement entered on January 14th, 2016 by P&M leasing, uh, Petro PACE Finance LLC in Orion Township, the the pro and the property owner is required to provide the other parties with 60 day notice of any prepayment. The property owner has made payment in full of the special assessment, including all interest charges, penalties, and penalties which accrued but did not pr provide the required, six but they did not, sorry, provide the required 60 day notice. The lender provided a letter dated November 30th, 2021, stating they are waiving the requirement. They're asking the township to waive the requirement as well to release the lien. Um, we are in full agreement in releasing the lien uh, on the basis that the special assessment, including interest, has been paid in full. Um, and I will be executing on behalf of the township, assuming this uh, motion passes. And just high level, or just to re remind everyone, this was a uh, energy project that was done at Powers Distributing to install um, a lot of energy efficient um, mechanisms, but most, uh, I think the majority of the expense was solar panels on the rooftop. Many of us were there with congressmen and all kinds of fanfare when they kicked off the project. It was the first PACE project in Oakland County, so it was exciting um, at the time. And uh, the reason that we are hopeful that the board, I'm hopeful that the board agrees with this, is that because Powers Distributing has sold, they will still operate as a beer distributor, but they're hoping to clean this up uh, this year so they can move to the closing of their business, and we want to uh, assist and support them in that. So. Um, so that's my high level, uh, Ms. Ms. Schultz. Yeah. So I move to discharge of the special assessment agreements for parcel numbers 0927, 301, 052, and 0927, 301, 055, located in Orient Township on the basis that PMM leasing has remitted payment for its assessment in full and authorize the supervisor to execute the same. Okay, is there support? Support. Any questions on this? We can ask Dan because we've kept him quiet all night so far. <laughs> no, good summary. <laughs> okay, any public comment on this? Uh, I guess it's a roll call because it's a resolution or it's notarized something. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Steele? Yes. Ernie? Yes. Del Rimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. All right, that completes our pending business. We have two reports tonight. 
I meant to add a, re a third report. I'll tell you about it in my comments and we'll add it to the next agenda. But the first report is our police and fire reports. I move to receive and file the police and fire report with comment. Go ahead with your comments. I'm sorry, Mr. Bernie, and then supported by Flood. Go ahead with your comments, Mr. Um, Bernie. Just real quick, I just want to thank the lieutenant, and the, the chief, and the assistant chief for, first of all, what they do uh, for our communities, but and secondly, for keeping us well informed, the board and the, um, the public, for putting these reports together every week for us. So I really appreciate it. So thank you for everything. That's it. Chief or Lieutenant, you guys want to say anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's been uh, crazy to say this. I do want to say one thing on this, um, and I'll, I'm going to talk for a minute about Oxford at the end, but, you know, one of the things that's really important, uh, I, I know to all of us, but, to, you know, is that we make sure we give the proper support to our first responders in, way, in the wake of what's happened. Um, I've been actually having several conversations with the former mayor of Parkland, Florida, who is now a state rep in Florida, um, and she has shared, you know, like vehemently with me that the number one thing we should be doing as an elected body is making sure we get the support that, that the first responders need. More important than taking care of the families of the victims. Now, obviously, there's, that's important, but in our role, um, because the fallout is, it, it can be really um, critical, and we know we're already having a hard time, not just in Oregon, but across the country, finding people that are willing to raise their hand and say they want to be a policeman or a fireman or a paramedic. Um, so we are going to be working diligently. Um, actually, they've even volunteered to send some people in, and I know the sheriff's office has been working on lots of, of things, and our fire department has been working on things, but know that we will, we will, even as long as people are saying that they're okay, we'll make sure they get all the help they need until they're, um, until there's no one in the classes or the support groups or the counseling sessions. So we want to take away the stigma of therapy. That's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. So something near and dear to my heart. So more to come on that probably in the future. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you gentlemen and your teams for what you guys have done to support our communities while all the craziness has been going on. Um, all right, it was moved and supported. Uh, all in favor of receiving and filing say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, and this seems strange, but there, we have a municipal complex um, uh, report, which we've been doing throughout the whole pro project. And I will tell you that, um, by the way, I always say this, and I forgot to tonight, um, all these things we see, you can see. So uh, if you're interested in seeing the police and fire reports, you can go online on our website. Uh, November, the November report for the municipal complex is a little dated now. Um, last meeting we had a lot of things going on and so we didn't have this, but basically um, we're in the building. <laughs> so I'm looking for a receiving file. There's a long punch list. Uh, we've been working with the team. Uh, I, I think that um, the good news is, is this, I guess one update we can share. We will be getting neighbors this week. Uh, the sheriff's office will be moving, uh, the sheriff's team will be moving in this week and, and we will be fully vacating the uh, 2525 and gas and power will be shut off in the first couple weeks of January, and we'll start the process of decommissioning that building and um, turning it into a park amenity. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm not gonna go through this right now. I mean, we did have some scheduling, um, slight scheduling issues as it related at the end, and that's covered in this, uh, but nothing uh, that we, we couldn't overcome, and we did. And so uh, we will have a full comprehensive wrap-up report on this project sometime in January, I'm hopeful. We're still paying some bills uh, at the latest February, but we wanna make sure we kind of put a bow on this one and kind of start or finish where we started with this is how much we said it was gonna cost, this is how much it cost, this is, this is how much over or under budget, and I'll save that for, for then, but um, I think we're in good shape on all that. So with that, I entertain a motion to receive and file the report. So move. And support, and then do you know when we might have a ribbon cutting? Yes, yeah. yeah, so we're looking, um, I would say sometime later in January, because we would like to have, um, there's still work happening daily here, um, and we wanna put art on walls and get some of the, you know, all the trades out. So sometime probably later in January, but by the next board meeting, we will have the date for you. If not, it will be sooner, but we'll be able to publicly announce it at the next board meeting. Um, but that's a good point, yes. All right. Um, 
comments or questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That brings us to public comment part two. Anyone? That brings us to board comment part one. Brian Burney, we'll start with you tonight. I'll be brief. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone and their families. Thank you. Mr. Flood. Likewise, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Happy Holidays. And stay safe. Donnie. Um, I do want to thank the employees at Orion Township for doing the food drive to help the Lions basket um, and gathering um, at the CERC building to put the baskets together and uh, the community to come in and they dropped off stuff as well too. And the treasurer's office did win the basket drive. I just want everybody to know. <laughs> and, um, and I know that employees went in the morning and they went in the afternoon and um, those baskets feed uh, people within our community, uh, I think there's 200 families that they feed and give gifts for for the two weeks during Christmas break. So it's not just one day, it's for the whole two weeks. It's a great organization. Thank you, Lake Orion Lions, for all that you do for Lake Orion. And I just want to close with saying um, I read something in the email and it just stuck. Um, and I wrote it down, determination, grit, resilience, and unity, and I'm stealing his words, is what we have gone through the last couple years. And I pray next year that it will be um, not as hard, um, but if it is, I believe that we can maintain our determination, grit, resilience, and unity. So Merry Christmas to the board, all the employees. Thank you for the board members and all the directors and the employees for um, their participation to make this township great. Thank you. Penny. I just want to say hi to my husband. I know he's watching. I appreciate you immensely. Merry Christmas to everybody. That's all I got. <laughs> Kim. Um, I just want to say thank you very much to the Orion Area Parade Group for uh, pivoting quickly and moving the parade and the Holly Jolly Folly the, um, to this past weekend. Uh, it turned out really well, and it was a nice to get back to seeing the parade with the kids. Um, so besides that, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Julia. I wanted to start with a big thank you to everyone who has donated um, food, snacks, backpacks, hugs, love, all the things that we've been doing the last couple of weeks, and especially uh, with Matt Pfeiffer coordinating a lot of those things um, through Northern Flooring to get those organized. I mean, we've opened hundreds of boxes every day of things, and... Um, Every student in Lake Orion at the high school has a backpack that was already done and organized. Um, so now we're continuing to go on, or to um, wrap those things up. And then um, thank you to the Orion Parade group again for a beautiful Christmas parade. Um, my kids were in love that we got to do something uh, fun again to be outside. And then um, a for Forgotten Harvest note is Forgotten Harvest will not be running on December 27th and January 3rd. Um, those are dates that they, the organization has off. And then one last thing is um, from all of us here on the board of your family, Kim, we want to congratulate you yeah. on your big weekend. Oh. Yay! So. Oh. <laughs> oh, so, thank uh, you. There, yeah, so Kim oh. had a nice big weekend uh, to graduate. So we wanted to tell you that we love you from your family here at Orion Township. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, see there? <laughs> Stealing the thunder that way. Sorry. That's no, fine, but there it is. Yay. Thank you. That's super cool. Yes. Um, These are so pretty. Congrats, Kim. Thank you. That's super exciting. Go Grizzlies. Right. Um, I'm going to walk through a few updates for you all. Um, I just. Um, what a year it's been, and this is our last board meeting of the year. Um, I do want to just kind of circle back for a minute and just talk briefly. Well, first, we'll, we'll just start about some good news we just got on Friday. Um, we received the Canadian National Beautification Grant, um, which we need to formally accept, which we were going to have it as a walk-on item, but there were too many walk-on items, and I didn't want to get yelled at at the last meeting of the year more than I already was going to. <laughs> So it'll be at our next meeting, but thanks to um, Sam Timko on helping us secure that. We're going to use that money to hope 
hopefully beautify our entrance on Joslin, our gateway out of Joslin Road coming north from Auburn Hills. Um, so that's great news. That's exciting. Good news that the little Christmas news there. $25,000, I believe. Um, so that, that'll do some nice landscaping and some nice beautification. So, um, but just, just again, just to talk a little bit about the gratitude and, that I have for this community. You know, we, um, I host a, a breakfast with local business leaders, and we were able to host it in this building, which was really fun, last um, Friday. And this was not the plan, but we had Jack Curtis joining us, Oxford Supervisor, kind of as our special guest. And um, he's still just extremely emotional and uh, for all the right reasons, but leading with just excellence up there. But one of the people, this was not meant to be a fundraiser breakfast, one of the people at the breakfast decided to see if we could, he could twist some arms on behalf of the effort. And that's not, a, that's not an exaggeration. And it probably was less than 15 minutes. In about five to 10 minutes, $70,000 was committed in that room next door to support the people in Oxford. And it's not just the people in Oxford because they're buying meals for the first responders and the training and the counselors. And it was just remarkable. I mean, I think it, there weren't many dry eyes in the room. It was just really cool. If people are interested in supporting the effort, um, and this is just this is just something that just happened in that room. On top of the hundred thousand here and the millions, probably of dollars in total that have gone, been donated through the GoFundMe's um, and the banks. But this is the best website. If anybody out there is listening or you're watching, you want to get involved, this is the place that everything's being vetted. I'm sort of on the committee. Um, Julia mentioned Matt Pfeiffer, Jack Curtis, Congresswoman Slotkin's office, Rosemary Bear's office. But this is where we're vetting counselors. We're vetting. Um, charities. Uh, so this is a lot of great resources. OxfordStrongCommunity.org. Um, there are still lots of ways you can help, uh, and you can find all that information on that website. Speaking of people doing great deeds, our Orient Township Firefighter Goodfellows are at it again this year uh, with their Fill the Boot campaign. And uh, these guys and girls are pretty remarkable because they take a lot of their time. This was two Saturdays ago. They collected money for purchasing gifts for needy families within our own community. And then last Saturday, they do the annual walk through, Kens for, through Keatington um, with a fire truck and fill up with all kinds of food items and cash donations and checks. And they turn that into um, Christmas for how many families this year do you know by chance? It's usually about 20 or so families. And I am telling you what, I've had the privilege of kind of working alongside these guys and girls for the last few years. They provide a full-on, like, Christmas meal, everything, and specific presents and wrapped for the kids and the family, like, stuff off their list. It's remarkable, um, and they really don't get enough credit for it, so I just want to say thanks to, to these guys and girls who, again, do this all on their own time, and on Christmas Eve, they will be having breakfast in the morning on Baldwin Road, and then they will be taking over... Is it Sam's or Costco? I always forget, but we go, they go there and they buy a lot of stuff and then they wrap and they're giving up most of their Christmas Eve days as families, a lot of these folks, um, to give to other people in our community. And they probably wouldn't, not many people would know about it except I'm talking about it right now. So they're really doing it in the background. This was just a cool picture I just wanted to show real quick. This was the first day we were here and I just wanted to, the reason I wanted to have this in here was just to say again one more time thanks to our incredible staff who has been patient uh, with new, uh, you'd think all this is just just easy and fun, but there's been a lot of stress and a lot of people's um, worlds have been changed. And so the fact that our staff has been resilient and strong and that Oxford happened the day after and a lot of them sprung into action to try to help there. But this was kind of a cool day where we got to raise our flags. Um, again, a little more good news. Yesterday, um, <laughs> I bet you Darren knows who's that, who knows who that deputy is in the middle that will refuse to have her picture taken ever. Um, <laughs> But Shop with a Hero looks a little different this year. We took the show on the road. Um, instead of taking children shopping in Meyer, uh, we actually, again, filled some needs of some families. And it's been happening over the last week or two, um, led by our awesome lieutenant, uh, Darren Ophira. This was yesterday. Um, and the crew from Johnny Black's on Baldwin um, adopted two families and did the same thing, bought these kids everything they exactly wanted on their list, and we got to deliver them. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. So thank you to deputies Meyer, Myers and Will uh, for joining us and the Johnny Blacks team. And then um, I think I'm getting to the end here, but again, lots of great news. Just thanks to the people in this picture here. John Cooper, most 
and Bill Kokanos is not in that picture, but they're, without John Cooper, Bill Kokanos, we would not have a parade or a holly jolly folly. John's the gentleman on the left that looks dressed up like a nutcracker. Um, but they put their heart and soul in tens of thousands of dollars to make that event happen every year, and it was awesome this weekend, as Julia mentioned. And just a quick one more shout out for Matt Pfeiffer, who was the citizen of the year, who has literally set and stopped his business, much like the Sick Pizza Group for, did for four days. Matt sort of put his flooring business on hold and has really kind of been ground zero for taking in donations and helping families and organizing, purchasing of backpacks and really doing a great job. So we can't say enough good stuff about our, our amazing residents. Kim graduated, <laughs> one more time. <laughs> we have an auction. Um, because we moved here, we have a lot of excess stuff. We would love to drive those prices up because that'll help our budget for next year. <laughs> so you can go to our homepage and you can do two things. You can buy things in our auction. You can also take our community survey. So I'll just show you what that looks like on our homepage real quick. Um, right on our homepage, we need you to do both of those things. You can see I was trying to get a picture of during the meeting. Don't tell anybody I was doing that during the meeting. Here's our homepage. If you just scroll down a little bit, you can see both those things I just told you about. The surplus auction will take you to the site of the company that's doing the auction at our old building that's auctioning off old equipment. And then right next to that, you can take our community survey. And we would love for you to check out both of those. Um, so our website updates is, is updated daily with all kinds of activities and information. Please check it out. And I think that's it. There was a lot to cover there, but lots of great news at the end of a busy, busy year. And with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn for the last time in 2021. So moved. Support. Moved by flood and supported by Bernie. Got it. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned at 829. Great meeting.